Hey, good morning, Ram Vets. It's me, Emma Cassidy, along with Mike Messina, and we're here for yet another episode of The Vet Scoop. Um, I believe we're on episode 11 now? I think so. Yeah, we're killing it. Episode 11, that's crazy. Um, Feature you're watching my dog here. So she's going to be glued to my side until I take them out when this is over. So I'm sorry in advance. But today we also have a special guest. Ooh, okay. I will say Gless because your name is Chloe. <laughs> and Chloe, your office, how do you say your last name? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. Is here with us today. One of our Prove interns here to give us a little bit of information and chat with us about what she does, what she can provide to the Ram vets and vice versa. So we're really excited to have you here. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Michael. I'm excited to be here. And this is my very first podcast. So it's an honor. Nice. I would love love, love to be the first time you come on a podcast. (laughs) So I guess basically to start off by telling us as a proof intern for us, what do you like, what are you guys doing? What do you do for the Ram vets that are within the SVAF? So I feel like first and foremost, um, we're really here to talk, um, you know, in general, the transition, um, out of the military into civilian life, specifically school, which is really stressful. Um, you know, that can be a difficult transition. So, um, it's just good to have someone to talk to that isn't a friend, isn't a family member, um, and also with COVID, you know, it's really lonely. I think most people are pretty isolated. Um, I know that uh, I personally am definitely seeing and speaking to less people than I did before COVID. Um, so I feel like, for, yeah, first and foremost, just there to talk about really anything. You know, sometimes I get on <clears throat> calls with people and we just like talk about what we're going to do that weekend or, you know, nothing serious. And sometimes, you know, it is a little heavier and it's, um, things that are weighing on people. Um, so that's been uh, such a wonderful opportunity for me. I feel like I'm learning so much. Um, and also, you know, it's just to provide like resources, kind of be the middleman. So um, if someone says to me, like, I'd love to do horse therapy, you know, maybe I'll make that call so they don't have to make that call. Or, <clears throat> you know, um, anything regarding their benefits, like I might not have the answer right away, but I can go to different resources that I've had that I have and say, Hey, so and so is looking to know more about how his benefits work and what can we let him know? Um, anything like that, any kind of support. Um, and also, you know, there's like a big network of people behind me. Prove has so many amazing people running it who are just such allies to the veteran community, like they just care so much like I've realized that just in the short time I've been working uh just how much they care about helping vets doing right by them making sure they have the support that they need uh their whole heart is in it so um I really I feel supported in that way because I can go to them and say you know so and so is having a really hard time what what is the best thing to say here what is the best thing to do and they um, have all the resources and they also have amazing training. So um, that's been helpful as well. So that's sort of what Kara and I, Kara is the other intern that I'm <clears throat> working with. Um, that's sort of what we do. Um, and it's just been such a privilege for me. Like I said, I'm just learning so much from interacting with everyone. I thought Mike was going to interject and he's waiting for me to interject. No, yeah, I thought, I thought you were going to say something. No, I don't mean to greet you with just like stark silence. <laughs> cool. No, um, really, um, this, is, this is my second semester and we had different proven interns last semester. So mm-hmm. um, I definitely don't feel that they were utilized as much as they should have been. Mm-hmm. I'm so, um, maybe it's just the nature of who's with us this semester, but I think that there is just a bit more of a socialization factor that has been noticeable to me so far. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's just because we have you guys in our team meetings now. So it's, yeah. just, it's a, it, it feels that you're more a part of the team rather than just a resource available to the team now, which in my opinion makes a huge difference. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. I mean, you guys have such a family connection. So it does feel like such an honor to kind of be welcomed into that in any capacity. I think it'd be even more brilliant if we were in person. Like I know that if we were all 
interacting in a real space it would just be such camaraderie and um you know just even the fact that we have that via zoom I feel like speaks volumes about like the bond that you guys have on your own and then Kara and I come in and everyone is so welcoming um yeah I mean I think thank you for saying that by the way Emma but um yeah I think going into this I was like a little nervous because um I have a I have a couple of friends that are vets and my grandparents um, were as well, but otherwise I don't really have any um, background with military. And so I didn't know what to expect. And it's been like, just really a wonderful experience. Like I, just the nicest people, honestly, just truly the nicest people. So um, I'm glad that we get to be a resource for anyone that needs it and it and it really does feel like a privilege to hear the intense things that go on in people's lives you know um so i'm i'm glad that you feel like we're more a part of it now yeah i'm glad that you said we're some of the nicest people because i i know a lot of people who would not say the same thing so <laughs> but that's nice to hear um it's just, it's just intimidating i think to come into an already tight-knit community mm -hmm veterans even if we didn't serve together right to because we have that solidarity and that understanding between us already like we've all shared this very similar life experience I think that between us it's easy for us to be involved with one another and get along because if anything else like or rather if nothing else we have that to talk about you know so right I can't imagine coming in as someone who has never served maybe or maybe doesn't know a lot about the military and um become melded in with that like I think that I would be nervous doing that but it hasn't felt like you guys were outsiders coming in it has just to me felt like we're all working together for the same goal so yeah absolutely yeah I didn't feel at all any I felt like it was very inclusive in spite of all of you being so close to begin with and you have this shared um like co commonality but yeah, I did not feel at all like it was hard to infiltrate that closeness. I felt like you guys just said, like, come in, we're having fun, we're like being ourselves. You know, like, Emma, you especially have been just being yourself right from the jump, which I love about you. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been really great. And I do wish it was in person, of course, but um, my hope is that eventually that will come to pass. And and we can really get silly. Oh, yeah. Um, if we were in person, would your space of work be the vet center all day long? Yeah, I think so. So people would just come in and talk like as, you know, as needed. Sort, sort of like how people make Zoom call schedules with me, but it would just be I was there. Yeah. So I guess, if any, what's been like a challenge for you from working via zoom or what the work you'd be doing if you were in person is there a big difference in what you would have been doing or it's pretty much the same just all virtual now it's pretty much the same I think the difference and I think this is true across the board whether or not you're like doing like uh you know counseling someone or you're just on the phone with family whatever there's that lag time so like you'll say something at the same time. In person, you can hear what the person said at the same time as you and respond to it. Via Zoom, when you speak at the same time, neither person hurts, you have to stop. And then someone's like, you know, there, it, there's just not a lot of fluidity. It's a little weird. So then you're like, and especially during like an int, a really intimate moment when that happens, it's not great for the flow. You're kind People of like- awkward sometimes. Yeah, it gets a little awkward. It can also just get awkward. Like when you sort of are starting to run out of things to talk about in person, it's just a little more natural. You kind of like have your, the comfort in your own body to rely on stuff like that. On Zoom, you're really like, you're just sitting there and then you're like- What do I you do know? <laughs> Yeah. What's going on? You right. pretend the camera broke suddenly and you're like, oh no. You're like, oh my God, that's so weird. It's looking a little. <laughs> I, you're going through a tunnel. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, I've, used, I've used that one plenty of times. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm physically okay. in a tunnel right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, On a couple of Zoom calls with family, I've been like, oh, that's so weird. The time limit because we don't have like a business mm -hmm. account. Oh, it's coming up. Like, must run. <laughs> yeah that excuse but i i pay for the business account so no ah, way too bad 
Absolutely. Um, I have a separate podcast from this that we talk for like two hours. So I have to have something that doesn't cap. Right, right. Yeah. That's a great excuse. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't pay for it either, but I can go like mine's unlimited. Um, I guess it I mean maybe it just depends. You know, when I was trying to record on mine for my personal podcast, it would cap me at like an hour. Really? Oh, really? Recording, you know, like um, oh for the oh, so maybe that's what it is maybe you can't record unless you have premium or something yeah and yeah. i don't know the semantics and i know that fordham like we as, as like our vet center zoom has a business account but i'm pretty sure they wouldn't be cool to be recording on there so no, <laughs> probably um, not i have a feeling but probably um, not but actually it's relevant to you we may as well mention it now that we have a bake off coming up that's actually going to be hosted by the Prove interns. And indeed we, have, we do. We have the flyer that's gonna be ready um, probably around like 10 a.m. today. So that'll be getting pushed to you and, and we'll distribute it as we do. But because it was your and Cara's idea, I'd love for you to just mention like what it's about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, basically we're just hoping that everyone will come together kind of like share you know, we'll probably go around and just say what we're each going to be baking. So we're going to be baking sort of in live time. Like, you know, we'll all be hanging out while things are in the oven or whatever, so that we can just like chat, get to know each other more. Um, yeah, everyone's going to say what they're baking. I'm going to make a key lime pie because that's truly the easiest thing to make in the world. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, people are welcome to like, it'll be in the middle of the day, but people have uh so they want to maybe bring cocktails interns will not be drinking of course but i can get just as silly you know with or without you know it's always um, it's always easier with though yeah it's always easier with yeah it's always you know what liquid courage but it's not great for everyone i do have that to put that true. out there you know a lot of people are self-medicating right now so we do have to be careful but um Yes, it is easier to be a little funny, you know, sometimes. But anyway, okay. uh, I digress. I'm the same either way, honestly. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Well, I'm like, me intoxicated, so I guess that's a surprise. <laughs> I have, not me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I have class that day at 6.30, so I will not be imbibing. But Yes. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, middle of the day is, is tough. But yeah, it's really about the bake. It's really about the bank. Um, and um, yeah, I think it'll be good to just like be able to chat throughout as we're baking. Um, and like I said, hope we're hoping to have some in-person uh, things. Like we, we put a poll out where we're maybe going to do like um, some kind of like team paintball kind of experience or uh, I suggested Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, but everyone said that was too lame, so tough. Cool, personally. I don't know. Maybe I missed that one, but I'll go with you. Okay, thanks, Emma. Yeah. Well, you know, it just seemed like really COVID safe, like you're outside, plants, whatever. All over Botanical Garden. Plus the weather is, it's kind of all over the place right now, but in general, yeah. it's been warming up pretty steadily. So. It has, yeah. That's I went to the cool. one in the Bronx and there was just no, like there was no plants, there was nothing. They were like, they were all just really? all dead in. Yeah, I spent like $80 to walk around and oh, no. stare, at, <laughs> stare at trees and grass. Oh no, that is a bummer. Usually it's like very well cultivated. They, you know, they obviously have a lot of funding and make it look crazy, but that's a bummer. And then I found out, I think Fordham, go, Fordham students can get in for free. Oh, what like, a bummer. You should have gone back and been yeah, like, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I was mad about after that because I not only bought, I didn't buy one ticket, I bought two tickets. So um, I was out double the morning. I've been to a botanical garden of any sort. Um, even when I lived in Atlanta, they had one, but it, it just, it was like the winter. So we were like, what do we do? Right. Yeah. Winter doesn't really exist in the Southeast, but you know, it's like a <laughs> concept. But um, I digress. I think that would be a really cool idea. But I do know that the paintball one was a pretty popular idea. Pretty popular. Yeah. I've never done it. I feel like I'd have a lot of anxiety doing it. Yeah, I've never done paintball one either. <laughs> um, I I'll do it, but... So I think this one is not as painful as like actual paintball, which I am relieved because actual paintball can be quite painful if you're like <laughs> not prepared. The bruises I've seen on my friends are... Yeah. 
I mean, they're into it. Look, sometimes it looks a little rubber bullet esque. You you asked for this though, so I can't like. Honestly, laser tag is like my thing, right? Like, that's yeah. So if we can find a laser tag place, like, don't judge how like into it. Like, I like before the military, I was like, I'm special, like special operations, I'm spec ops, you know, like, and it was a whole thing. So. Um, <laughs> anyway i'm really good at air hockey i'd love to find a place to do an air hockey tournament love air, love hockey. air hockey yeah that was chuck e cheese like or david busters like that's all we really need david totally. busters but can you think of a dirtier place for covid yeah. <laughs> I mean, we go in like we may as well just lick the floor yeah <laughs> but you know um as the vaccine I, I personally have my first dose already so i'm waiting on my second one for april 3rd. oh that's so exciting so hopefully, um, I think May 1st, it was announced that all adults will be eligible. Yeah, I saw that. So, um, oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I hope that people take heed and, you know, get it. Um, I can personally say that I'm not dying by getting it. You know, I think that any vaccine, it being new, you're going to have some sort of side effect to it. And, you know, like the whole point of a vaccine, you know, is to build up your immune system. So. Right. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to whatever the new normal is. Me too. It's, it's not, it doesn't seem as far off as it did a year ago when we thought this was going to last two weeks and then we were very wrong. So. Oh, I remember that vividly. Thankfully we're going back to school in the fall in person. So that's, that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like virtual classes personally. Um, you do? I do because it's not that I don't I, I like the social interaction of going to class right like I'm, I'm an extrovert I need that but at the same time I I feel like with my math class it's different because I, with that kind of stuff I have to be like in front of someone showing me how to do it versus, mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to philosophy and English and my theology courses I I just thrive better in an online virtual environment because then I don't have to worry about everyone else asking questions that I may or may not agree with you know like mm -hmm. uh, complicated but well you still you still have to deal I still have to deal with that at least people just turn on like we have one kid in in my social media class who just talks and talks and talks and everyone's like dude can you mute yourself like no no one cares what you're saying here um just yeah I, I appreciate discourse to be sure but um to an extent you know and then I just while I'm an extrovert I work best on my own which is why I hate multiplayer and online games mm. um, because I hate them. I'm like, I can do this better. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I think there's pros and cons. I do think there's certainly as someone that's uh, going to school for social work, there's a lot more intimacy in person, mm -hmm. you know, like people will cry and share things in a group setting that they would never on zoom <clears throat> because it's because you're sitting alone in your box. So you're very exposed, you know, um, but uh, there is something very nice about being like, oh, class is in five minutes. Let me like push my popcorn. To, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially, you know, if you have like pets or kids, it's a, mm -hmm. it, it is a lot easier to just be like, all right, I'm popping on my computer versus I'm getting on the N train for an hour. You know what? Not an hour, but you know, it can be. Oh, no, mine's an hour. Yours is an hour. Wow. That I have to, I live in South, Yeah, I live in South Brooklyn. So like in the Midwest. Mm. Not south south it's like above sheep's head but it's still like pretty mm -hmm. so i ride the q to the b for an hour to get wow to the so see that's yeah, not worth that's it tough. for me uh it is that, a, that or pay 17 dollars for parking you know so well i'd rather just i'd rather just live closer to campus if that was me he wants you to pay more in rent. I'm going to get with it. Yes, that's <laughs> I pay $3,000. No, absolutely not. It's not even that. I, I found places in my budget. It was just, I have two dogs. And, and wow. it's mm -hmm. just so hard to find places that let you have dogs at all, let alone two 60 pound dogs. So, yeah. 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 That is a tough commute. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely pros and cons, but it will be interesting to see, like, I'm starting to think that even like now that we, there is like more of a normalized mask culture. If like when flu season comes around, we're just wearing masks because no, who likes getting sick? You know what I mean? And there isn't the like, Oh, mask looks weird. Cause now we've all seen it for a year. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? It's true. I never had the flu, thankfully. So knock on wood that I never get it. But I'm hope I'm hoping we don't have to wear masks during flu during like flu season every year because I'm sure everyone's getting tired of them. 
Uh, yeah. So most people, I'm pretty yeah. sure everyone. I'm tired of working out in one. That's for sure. Um, and my skin is definitely tired of me working out in one. So that's impressive that you can work out. I just would stop working out. I just could not. It takes, it took time for sure. And it definitely like, I had to get masks that like, while they covered my nose and my mouth completely, they didn't sit against them. Yeah. So, um, consequently, of course, like I've had to up my skincare routine, like 30 times what I would normally do it. And yeah, the cost of youth and beauty but i know my issue is i just like i have masks in my car i get to the store and i walk all the way to the door and i'm like wait gotta walk all the way back get my mask yeah. and i'm like well i like imagine if i just wasn't allowed in because i forgot the mask in it and i'm like yep this is definitely where where life's heading in the future i could tell you that i think mm-hmm. i don't know like it it is so regional it just depends on where you are and how people react to masks like where i live no one wears masks like any really i mean like most of the stores will have a sign saying like please wear a mask yeah and wear them in and out but just like walking around like i understand if like you're walking your dog at like midnight and you don't wear a mask like okay but during the day there's plenty of people around so but no people are just like meh and it's like okay <laughs> wow i'm surprised huh yeah i mean I do think that there's something to be said. Like I, every season I used to, well, I guess this has, this isn't really mass related. It's more about seeing no one, but I used to get sick every year, a cold or the flu or something. I don't have like the world's greatest immune system, obviously. Um, but knock on wood this year, because I don't see anyone, you know, cool as a cucumber. I'm, I'm good. And I'm like, wow, like it makes you realize how dirty people really are. Like it's a germy world when you're out there. People just sneeze on things. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I've seen a lot of trade nose pickers. Like, see, See, I'm not, I hate, I hate seeing people sneeze in their masks though. I'm like, I think that's even worse than just, no, at least you're keeping it to yourself, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. I get that, but I don't know. I, I personally am not sneezing my mask. Do it and see what happens. Like, you'll be vilified. Leave that mask on, sneeze into it, deal. Like, wow, that's not yeah. how, That's disgusting. Yeah, well, oh, come on. More, it's like peeing in a wetsuit. Come on, it's not that bad. I mean, it's it, more sick. It's well, yeah, but the whole point is to not get others sick, right? Like, yeah, but know. sneezing doesn't mean you're going to make other people sick. I mean, I don't yeah, have- it does. That's all your stuff coming through. Well, no, no. I like, but like cover your mouth. I'm not just going to sneeze into the wide open. Well, actually when you're sneezing, the etiquette, if you're not wearing a mask is to go like this into your arm. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's how I sneeze. I mean, of okay. course, if you're a normal human being, you do that, but some people yeah, are just like, you know, they're like when babies sneeze, you know, they just sneeze into the, the, the ether. They're just like, it's getting like, a, getting a mask on a baby is a whole nother story though. But yeah. They- I mean, they, kids, I think the younger children are the, the least likely, I think, to contract COVID. So I have seen people very lax with their children when it comes to masks. But I will say they look super cute in them. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like my nephew, one wouldn't wear a mask. He would just rip it off of his face. Yeah. Two, my, my brother doesn't, they don't even try because it's just fighting a fight that they're never going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, so my son is a little over one and. Um, a good friend of mine who doesn't have kids was like, how come you don't make him wear a mask? And I was like, that's like making a cat wear a mask. Yeah. Like I could try, but <laughs> you know. They're ripping that thing off their face as quick as yeah. possible. I mean, yeah, it, it would, I would have better, I would sooner win the lottery than him just walking around with a mask on. <laughs> yep. Yep. Like Makes sense. Sick all the time anyway. It's yeah. <laughs> it's it, a lot of kids are gross. Well, they're just so, well, like, they just don't get germs. They're like, whatever. But, like, that's how we built up our immune systems. You know, I'm not saying that COVID is a part of that. It's sort of external to COVID, but just in general, you know. Yeah. When they're, especially in, like, daycares, when they're surrounded by each other and they're all just collectively touching and yeah, yeah. doing whatever it is they do. Like, putting blocks in their mouths. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. Their faces because it's whatever. And then they're just like, well, okay. And then they just move on. Kids are wild, man. Oh, so, yeah. The little girl I used to babysit for, uh, you know, a while ago, she would run. So we were in Chelsea. She went to like the seminary nursery. I don't know if anyone knows that, but anyway, 
and her house was like 10 blocks away, she would run her hands over the top of every trash can over those 10 blocks, no matter what water was sitting on top of them, anything. And you know what? She's thriving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like I am loath to like even know what I got into as a kid because I never get sick. So I'm like, I must have done some crazy things as a child to build this immune system. Oh, no question, no question. But it's good. That's what you want. Yeah. Can't wait. Kids are a different breed. They can do whatever they want and they're mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. They yeah. they just suck it up and deal with it after yeah. crying, but they, <laughs> usually it ends up okay. Uh, yeah um yeah. but way digress the bake-off that we oh, were the bake-off yeah yes so, so um, we're gonna bake we're gonna talk yeah yeah um i i love to bake i just i hate here's my thing with cooking in general i hate the cleanup and i don't have mm. a dishwasher like i am mm so right, right. um I hardly ever cook just because like I for just myself it seems pointless but for the bake-off I'm still debating what I want to do but I am going to put some actual effort in so yeah no make so, it count I was telling a friend like with baking in most cases there's no in-between with serving size you either have 20 cupcakes mm-hmm. or like <laughs> you can't it's so hard to make just a tiny batch of anything so I'm like, whatever I make, it needs to be like a pie or like a cake or just brownies because those are the small serving sizes I can think of. And I yeah. will eat the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't make a tray of brownies for myself. Those things wouldn't <laughs> last a second. Yeah. <laughs> would, they would get demolished. I, I do wonder how the judging is going to go because we're all tasting it. We're like, I win. Mine's the best. <laughs> yeah. The, ju- the judging will be tough. I feel like judging will be based on presentation is my guess. So I'm planning on doing like a little whipped cream, you know. I truly believe the ugliest desserts taste the best. I I hear that. I hear that. I don't know why people who like make some mishmash of brownies and it looks like total disgusting nastiness for some reason they taste the best. It's delicious. Mushy brownies are just undercooked mushy. It's so good. So So good, yeah. Really batter, but like cooked just enough, you know, that it's like sort of crispy on the outside, but still like gooey on the Mm that's yeah. Yeah, I want those. Yeah. Well, great. Now I want a brownie. Yeah. I guess moving on from the bake off for a second, Emma, you mentioned we have a first Friday event coming up. What is it? What 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 are we doing? Unfortunately, but we have a service day coming up. Service day, that's what I meant to say. (laughs) No, I'm like, oh sorry. First first Friday Friday. for some reason. (laughs) <laughs> no it's okay um we did have a first friday it was a lot of fun if you didn't make it obviously there's one every day, so um please try to make it out we do have a service day on the 27th we're just going to be with the dream center again because it was pretty successful this last time and i personally really want to build that consistent connection um they already know me but i'd really love for them to become familiar with the people within um the svaf and just at fordham in general I would like to note that if you're not part of the SVAF or you know people who aren't part of the military affiliated community, but they still might be interested, they can still volunteer. They just have to go a slightly different route. So we have a registration for them, but for just volunteering in general, you go to the Dream Center NYC website. So just Google Dream Center NYC, go to COVID-19 relief, and then go to volunteer and you fill out a form. They contact you and that's, that should be the only time you have to fill it out. It's like a one-time thing. And then after that, you can sign up for a texting service where they say, oh, we're volunteering at X, Y, and Z time on Saturday. Uh, will you be there? You say yes or no, end of story. And then they have you down from that point on. So um, like I said, we will have a registration form and I will directly contact them with the names of who will be there. There's no form involved until you get there. And there's of course, like a COVID safety form, temperature check, all of, the, of uh, those things. We change gloves every 30 minutes. Um, I'm trying to get us involved in the food pantries throughout the week because it's just a little bit of a different environment and definitely a little bit more direct. So with the food warehouse, you're with just other volunteers packing boxes, but obviously the pantry, you're interacting with people from the community that entire time. So you're like, even if you don't know them and you don't don't form connections with them directly, it's, there's something to be said about seeing the fruits of your labor literally go out and help someone because that's why we're doing it. Like they've served thousands of meals throughout COVID. So yeah, that's amazing. I've done look like you guys are having a blast in the pictures, though. 
we had a lot of fun. They play music, you know, like it's high energy, it's loud and it's just, it's a lot of fun. So and we switched up to the, the job. So I started on the assembly line and then I went back in. I started like helping deconstruct boxes, restocking the tables with food. So um, hard to explain all in one breath. I hope I did a decent job, but you did. I just really encourage anyone who has the ability to come out on a Saturday morning or an afternoon. The times are 11 and 1.30 um, that you do. Just even if you only do it once, you know, like just get the experience, so. No, exactly. I do a lot of that stuff up here where I live in, in Poughkeepsie and I love doing it. Like on Thanksgiving, uh, one of my friends and his family's every Thanksgiving, they just spend it at, I don't know if it's like a soup. I think it's a soup kitchen. And they just serve people all day long. And, and I love hearing about it. And I've never got to do it on Thanksgiving, but every other, I, I love doing it. it. It just makes, makes you feel so good. Mm-hmm. Makes you feel okay. so good. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I thrive on volunteering in general. I think that there's just, um, you know, everyone says thank you for your service to service members, but I always feel very awkward when people say that to me, you know? So I channel that awkwardness into just giving back as much as I can. Um, And I think that the city is really supportive of its veterans and the least we can do is reciprocate that in serving the communities that that we live in, so. That's wonderful perspective, Emma. What can I say? No, I'm <laughs> um, before we leave you guys, yep. we would just like to note that um, you need to, I, I say need to, but of course it's your choice. Rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. No, um, you need to. You need to. You need Come to. on. Turn on, turn on notifications turn on YouTube. Turn on notifications. Get your ringer oh. bell. There's always an episode every week, of course. There's audio as well as video. Um, and... Because I'm sure you're just so invigorated by what Mike and I talk about every week. But truly, there's always useful information. Even if we don't have a great guest like Chloe on every week, there's still a conversation to be had and information to be learned. And even just something to listen to when you're driving into the city. Like, trust me, I've driven in that traffic. You will be in your car for at least 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. the, worst t- the worst type of traffic. So, yes. The worst. Mm-hmm. If that's it, I have nothing else. Chloe, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, we we appreciate you everything you've given us. Of course, but we'd love we'd love to have you and um, Kara on yeah. together one episode. So so let's we, we can try and work that out. Guys, remember, rate, review, subscribe, turn on the SVAF's YouTube page notification so you guys know when an episode drops. And we'll be back next week with episode 12. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks.